Okay, so The Banker, which is on Apple TV, directed by Judge Nolfi, who made uh, the Adjustment Bureau based on true events from the 1950s and 1960s. It's a story of Bernard Garrett, played by Anthony Mackie, and Joe Morris, played by Samuel L. Jackson, who were these uh, entrepreneurs who basically started working in real estate uh, in Los Angeles. Um, on the one hand, you know, looking to make a profit, but more importantly, to attempt to to break the the color line in terms of where housing uh, between you know uh, uh, African American housing and white white and black housing back then it was it was you know uh, as it was described, and then they moved into banking and they bought a bank in Texas, partly again for profit, but partly because what they were going to do was to give loans to African-Americans who at that point were not able to get the kind of loans that they needed to set up their businesses. And there's an underlying story here, which is that, you know, access to that kind of success in America is dependent on having the finance to set up the businesses you're trying to set up. And as long as there's a color bar preventing that from happening, then, you know, you're not going to be able to do it. However, what they discover in the course of the film, this is a story, incidentally, it's a true story, but I didn't know it. So all I knew, no. I know, is the, the history as told in the film. Did you know this story before, Simon? Were no, you familiar no. With it? Okay. no so, not at all. So they have made um, these inroads in uh, in the housing market in LA, and they've bought a bunch of buildings that are in what are referred to as white areas, and they've managed to, to, to buy them. To, I, and we, we see very early on at least one of the tenants being outraged that this has happened. But when it comes to the, the the banking industry, they need somebody to front what they're doing. And so what happens is they get in Max Steiner, played by Nicholas Holt, who is basically, his job is to be white. His job is to be the person who is the face of the company. So they are the brains. They are doing all the business behind it, but they are, they've got to get this guy um, you know, to front the business for them. Problem is, he has no experience in banking. He has no sort of you know uh, experience e- even with numbers or, or with dealing with the kind of stuff you can. And so, I mean, some of the film's most fun sequences are them teaching him it's kind of like a kind of um you know them teaching him how to play golf how to eat a four course meal with all the right cutlery in all the right places how to deal with questions about numbers how to give the impression of being somebody who has always been around this you know this kind of business so that's for me the most enjoyable part it then as it then moves into the second section of the film which is really where the meat of the story is concerned um, it becomes much more about the legality of what was happening, and there, it's much more overtly a sort of social commentary rather than it begins. It almost begins like a caper movie, and then it becomes more serious. It goes on. It, it's an odd film. I think there are some great performances. I think Anthony Mackie is terrific. I think Samuel L. Jackson is terrific. I think Nicholas Holt is really good. It's very well designed. The production design in it, you know, does evoke the era very well. Um, visually, however, it it was slightly televisual. I mean, it was, it was odd watching it. I felt like I was watching a TV movie. Uh, Originally it was due to be, uh, have a small theatrical release. It was set to premiere at the AFI uh, in November of 2019, ahead of a limited theatrical release. And then there was a, a scandal. This was the statement from Apple TV. We purchased the banker early this year. We were moved by the film's entertaining educational story about social change and financial literacy. Last week, some concerns surrounding the film were brought to our attention. We, along with the filmmakers, need some time to look into these matters. So they pulled it from the festival and um it turned out that uh, it was somebody one of the one of the descendants of one of the characters portrayed in the film who had a had a producer credit had become involved in a scandal so that his name then came off it anyway it stopped it having a theatrical release i think it has found its natural home uh on television i thought it was fine uh, i thought it started strongly kind of to me dramatically lost some power in its second half um but i do think the performances were good and it was a story that i hadn't heard before and when it's in its in its kind of caper mode i think that's when it's best what did you think so it sounds as though when my internet dropped out <clears throat> i'd seen the best bit so I, <laughs> i'd seen the first half and i and i was really enjoying it you know i yeah. thought it was a really interesting story yeah. uh it's not it's not one of those uh shocking stories uh of the racist uh that we get a lot that we've seen before uh, in movies, but I thought it was sort of all the more shocking for being casual. I always think the casual racism is, yeah. is all the more shocking because you still hear that, you know, you still hear those 
comments and opinions expressed. But I thought the performances were, were terrific. And they you're are, absolutely they? right. It felt like I was watching it on my laptop and it felt like the right place for it. And I didn't yeah. think, I wish I was watching this on a big screen other than I wish I was at the house. But uh, I, th- I thought it, it's well worth, if you've got Apple TV, it's well worth spending some time with it. Yeah, it, it, I think the performances are very, very good. And uh, as I said, it's a story that I didn't know before. I do particularly enjoy the kind of My Fair Lady bit in which essentially what Anthony Mackie and Samuel L. Jackson's character are trying to do is to teach Nicholas Holt how to behave like he's a privileged white kid and there is a you know i think those sequences work really really well particularly teaching him how to play golf which is a game which i've never understood at all i think all that stuff works well i think later on as it becomes more serious and it slightly loses the caper aspect it loses a bit of its dramatic oomph but it's as i said i don't think it's i think it's 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 perfectly suited for home viewing I did think also it's nice to see Samuel L. Jackson. I mean, it's not going to win any awards or anything, but just being really strong in a movie without being ridiculous. Yeah, I think he's a really good actor. I mean, he's a really, really versatile actor. And the character that he's playing is somebody who, when you're first introduced to him, you think he's a kind of, you know, he's a hustler and he's, uh, you know, he's unreliable and he's kind of very funny and he's talking about drinking all the time. But actually the relationship between those two characters, because there is a moment later on in the film, which you won't have got to, in which they both tell each other what they both thought of each other the first time they met. And it's a, it's a, that is actually a really, really lovely okay. scene between Anthony Mackie and uh, Samuel L. Jackson. I should go back and watch the rest of it then.